Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. A paz do seu irmão. Peace of the Lord, my brother. Vamos abrir a... Let's open the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 6, 2 Samuel 6, from verse 2 Samuel 6, from verse 10 to 12. We'll be here also in the projection. This is the word of our God. So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with gladness. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for the moments that we have had up with intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We plead so that the word once again may bless your people and your church. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, my brethren. The word says, my brethren, that on the days of Saul, the presence of God was not manifested and for 20 years the presence of God or the Ark of the Covenant remained in the house of a man whose name was Abinadab. And the meaning of this name is father of generosity. It's like father of goodness, the, the house of the merciful, and uh, the house of the good one. And that was the meaning of that man, that man, the father. The word says, my brethren, that throughout that entire time, the ark of the Lord, the, the presence of the Lord was in that place. The presence of God was not given the proper worth by that man and by his family and by his household. And nothing happened, nothing took place, nothing happened there throughout this period of 20 years where the Ark of the Covenant, where the presence of God was in the house of that man. There was not from part of this man, from that individual, from, from that family. It was not given the proper worth of the presence of God in that person's house, the presence of God in their life. That person didn't give worth to the Ark of the Covenant. He didn't uh, give worth to the alliance and the covenant. He didn't give worth to the pact that the Lord had made with his people, with the people of Israel. And inside of the Ark of the Covenant, there was there three elements. The word speaks about the tablets of the law. The tablets speak of the Father, God, the Creator. The tablet also represents the Word of God. And we can say here the Bible, the Old Testament, the commandments of the Lord, so that man may fulfill and live by them. And also inside of the Ark of the Covenant, the rod of Aaron. He didn't give worth to the Word of God and also did not give worth to the presence of the rod. In other words, the direction of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit in his house, in his life, 
And there was also a manna. Manna was the bread that came down from heaven every morning. And people would eat and would get fed from the manna. And he didn't give worth to this. And Jesus, in a certain point, he says the following, I'm the bread that comes down from heaven. And whoever eats from me will never die. I'm the bre living bread that came down from heaven. I'm the bread of life. Whoever eats off of me will never die. So we see that for 20 years, nothing happened. Nothing took place. And there comes a moment, a moment in which there was a, a change of kingdom. Saul dies and now enters in his place King David. And the first act of David was to bring the ark of the Lord into the city of Jerusalem or into the city of David, his city where he had built an inhabitants so that the ark could have been placed. And the word says that in those days, it was not the moment yet for the ark to be conducted to Jerusalem. So then the ark departs the house of Abinadab and one of the children of Abinadab dies and we see that the presence of the Lord is removed from a place. What happens is death. The problem and the difficulty and adversity. And the word says that on this day, David, he didn't want to remove the ark for himself. He understood that that was not the moment for the removal of the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Alliance, the pact of God with man. It was not a moment to remove it, but it was the moment to, the, to place that Ark on the house of a man that he has chosen. And it is interesting that the choice of that man was a choice of David. And David, when whatever he didn't fail, he typifies our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. Obed Edom was chosen so that the ark could have been placed in his house. And the meaning of the word Obed Edom means servant. Edom means red. So the word says that they live in, in a place called Gati. Gati means uh, a place of the press. So he was generated on the place of the press. And Isaiah 53 speaks about this press where the servant of the Lord, Lord was generated on Obed. Obed Edom was generated where he was born. He was born on the place of the press. He was wounded by our transgressions. He was crushed. The curse of the Lord was upon him. The curse that was supposed to be for us went upon him. And through his wounds we have been healed. So it is speaking about a man that was generated, that was born, and that inhabited on the place of the press. A man that was saved, that was rescued by the precious blood of Jesus. That's why his name was Obed Edom. He was a servant of the Lord. He was a servant of the Holy Spirit. He gave worth of the press. He gave worth to the sacrifice. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And he gave worth to it. That's why Dave chose him, because it was a man who gave worth to it. It was a man that he knew the great price that he didn't pay, but the great price that was paid on his behalf because he was servant, he was slave. So someone purchased him. And we also have been purchased, not with gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Jesus. We are from Gideon. We are servants of the Lord. We are servants of Jesus Christ. We are the ones who serve God in gratitude for what He has done for our lives, for the great sacrifice of Jesus for each one of us. So there was a connection, there was a commitment between 
obeyed with the Lord. So he was a servant of, of the Lord. And David then chose to place the Ark of the Covenant. He chose now to place the presence of God on the house of a servant. And the word says the following. David was not, did not desire to remove the ark to him, but he, David made the ark to go to the house of uh, Obed-Edom. And tonight we can say that the Lord Jesus is causing the ark to be brought in the project of God, the presence of God, the presence of the Father, the presence of the Son, and the presence of the Holy Spirit to the house of the servant. And why David ordered to send the ark to the house of the servant so that there the servant of God could, as he gave forth to the presence of God, that he would be blessed by it. And the word says, my brethren, that the ark remained there. The ark stayed there for for a period of time. And the ark represents the project of God for the life of the servant. And the ark remains for a period of time. And what period of time is this? It's a period of time until David, who represents the Lord Jesus, would bring it to Jerusalem. So it was an opportunity that the Lord was giving there to obey Edom. It was an opportunity the Lord gives to his servants not to remove immediately the ark to Jerusalem, but leave the ark for a time in the midst of his servants, so that his servants, so that his people, so the ones that give worth to the presence of God in their lives, in their house, may be blessed. And the word says, my brethren, that now the ark stayed, so obeyed a don't accepted the ark in his house, he accepted the plan, the project of God in his life, he accepted the law, he accepted the word of God, he accepted to be guided, he accepted to be conducted by the Holy Spirit, which was the rod of Aaron, who was the direction of the Holy Spirit. He accepted and he fed off of every day of the manna that comes come down from heaven. So every day he fed he fed of the word. And there's a song that we sing that your word is strong sustenance. So a man that for three months he gave worth to the plan, to the project of God, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on His behalf and to His benefit. So the Word says that, the, that He was blessed for three months. So the period of Father, the period of the Son, and the period of the Holy Spirit. The Ark of the Lord is being deposited for a period of time in our midst. But at any moment, it will be taken away. It will be brought to Jerusalem. So the project of God is not going to remain in this world. Jesus himself said, I'm, I don't belong to this world. I'm going to the Father to prepare you a place. And I will return. Because whatever I am, I want you to be as well. So the ark stayed for three months. And those three months, David was preparing a place for the ark. And during this period of time, the prophetic time of God, the ark is present on the house of the servants, but there is a place for the ark, which is on the eternity. And the word says, my brethren, that and obed Edom was blessed, and the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed obed Edom. The desire of the Lord is always to bless His servants. The desire of the Lord is always to operate on behalf and to the benefit of his servants has always been the, the desire of the Lord. Everything that the Lord has prepared for man is good. Every project of God to man is good. But sometimes man does not give worth to it. It remained for 20 years on the house of an individual and the presence of the Lord was not given the proper worth. And now, three months, short time, 
there's short there's only a short time left and in any moment in the blink of an eye the presence of the lord will be removed from us the ark of the covenant of the lord will be removed the project of god will be removed the the church will be raptured but in those days david who typifies lord jesus he he chose let's place the ark on the house of the servant let's leave the house on the ark and the house of the servant and the servant accepted the presence of the ark, the presence of God on his house. And the desire of the Lord is exactly this. He has chosen us to place in our lives, in our households, this ar his ark of covenant, his project, his pact. The word says, my brethren, that the Lord blessed the, the house obedient on and all his household. So, when the servant of God receives the project of God, the alliance of the Lord, the pact of the Lord, when he gives word to this pact, this covenant, God blesses that person in every area. So the word says here, he was blessed in every aspect. He was blessed in every aspect of his life. When we would take in the past the sermon of God called Jacob, when he meets with Esau, Esau, his brother, he says, I have everything. <clears throat> because Jacob had everything. Because the Lord had blessed Jacob in all things. And the servant of God obeyed the servant. He was blessed in everything, in every area of his life. And the word says, my brethren, the word explains why he was blessed. Why was he benef received the benefit? Why the Lord prospered everything in his life? For What is the reason why? It is written here, for the love of the ark of the Lord. So he was blessed because he loved the presence of God. He loved the pact of God, the covenant of the Lord. That's why he was blessed. The word says, <coughs> what, what are we going to gain? 100 times this in the coming century eternal life. The word says, seek the Lord in first place and everything else will be added unto you. And that's what happened. When the kingdom of God, when he received the kingdom of God, he received the covenant of God, the alliance of God in his household and gave word to this pact, this covenant, this agreement. The Lord blessed him in everything else. The life of this man, the house of this man was transformed. The word says that whoever is in, is in Christ is a new creation. Everything has been made new. There was a change so great, so surprising that became a testimony to all the families of Israel. And what the Lord made on that place, on that house, on that family, came to the ears of David. It was informed to David. And, my brethren, what God is doing in our midst, placing his ark, choosing us for this pact of this covenant so, so that we can give worth to this blessing of the Lord, it will come to the knowledge of David. It will come to the knowledge of Jesus. It, it will be the moment for the ark to be taken away. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Only the Father knows. But at any moment, the Father is going to announce the, the Son, and the ark will be removed from our midst. It will be brought to Jerusalem. And the desire of the Lord is that as the ark is being taken away, it will be taken with joy. So, in other words, guide the servant of God to the new Jerusalem, to the new heaven, and to the new world. David says that he brought the ark of the Lord. He brought it up. So, the Lord is going to rescue his people. He is going to rescue his church. He is going to rescue the ones who have made a covenant, a pact with him, bring them up. So, in other words, to the eternity, to his house, to the house of God, to the heavenly, heavenly Jerusalem. And this is going to happen with joy. Why is that? Because salvation is the greatest joy. 
The rest of the church is the greatest joy. Lord Jesus is going to bring, uh, going to come to pick up his people with, God, with joy. He's going to see that his people has adopted a commitment with him. He, they gave word to the brother of God in, his, in their lives. So they informed David and said, The Lord blessed the house of obedient Edom and everything that he had for love of the ark of the Lord. So my brethren, the desire of the Lord, once again, is to bless his servants in everything that they have, in every aspect of their life, with salvation, with grace, with power, with authority, with the direction of the Holy Spirit, when we give word to the Word of God, when we feed of Jesus the bread of life, when we are directed by the Holy Spirit, the Lord God blesses us in every aspect, in everything that we have. The ark was placed on the house of Obed Edom, and the bless, blessing of the Lord flourished. The blessing of the Lord spread. The blessing of the Lord invaded that entire house and the entire household. And the desire of the Lord is exactly this, to bless his people, to bless his church. Obedidon, he was generated on the place of the press. My brother and sister, you have been generated. You, you are worth a high price. We are servant of God. And we receive the ark of the Lord in our lives so that we may give proper worth every day. And as we love the presence of God and give worth to the presence of God in our midst, everything in our lives will be changed. So we see here the transformation in the life of a man, in the house of a man. Obedient Don, he lived on the way to Jerusalem and the house and the ark was, the, was placed on his house. So we are walking towards Jerusalem. But we need to walk with the ark of the Lord present in our lives. We need to give worth to the presence of God in our midst. And that's what Obedidon did. God blessed the house of, of Obedidon. He blessed the family of Obedidon. He blessed everything the Obedidon had for love of the ark of the Lord. So when we love the Lord, he blesses us because we love the Lord because He loved us first. We chose the Lord because He chose us first. They gave an, or an order, placed the ark on the house of Bidon. And the Lord is giving an order here tonight. I'm going to place my ark, my covenant, my pact, my alliance on the house of my servant so that my servant during these three months may be blessed. And that's the desire of the Lord, to change, to transform our lives. David placed the ark on the house of Bidon, and in three months, the life of Bidon was completely transformed. He was blessed because he gave worth to the presence of God. He loved the presence of God. He gave worth to the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord in his house, in the midst of his family members. And that's the desire of the Lord. We may do the same, to give worth every day the plan, the project of God in our lives. Give worth to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give worth to the Word of God. Give worth to the Holy Spirit and be guided every day by Him. And that we may feed every day of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because He's the bread of life given by God, so that we may not perish, so that one day we may be taken to His eternity. The ark was removed. The project of God will finish on this earth, but we'll be taken up with him, like David, to, with joy to the new Jerusalem, to the new land, to the new earth that the Lord has promised to us. And the ones who are going to go up is a servant that has given worth to the great sacrifice of the Lord towards my life, toward our lives. Amen. Let's sing a song to the Lord. <coughs>
Remember, brethren, the Lord has shown on a spiritual gift, and the gift the Lord was showing, um, and this uh, crank the Lord was showing that you need uh, lubrication, and without lubrication, this gear would stop and would rust. But tonight, tonight the Lord was using an instrument, and this instrument had a, a very thin oil, special oil that was applied to this gear, and this gear would begin to work perfectly. And what does that mean? It, it is showing that once again tonight, the project of God, the Ark of the Covenant, the commitment of God with His servants is being renewed. Is being uh, restored once again. No servant of the Lord can walk without the presence of the Holy Spirit. If there's no oil, if there's no olive oil, we are unable to produce what God has determined for our lives. When the ark was in the house of Abinadab, it rusted, it stopped working. It didn't bring any benefit. Why is that? Because there was no worth to 
of the servant to the ark, to the presence of this covenant of the Lord with that house, with that home, with that family. So when he comes, albeit a dome, uh, it is different. He was a servant. He understood that he needed the blessing of the Lord. And that's what we need to understand. We are not the Father, the Creator. We are the servants of the Creator. We are the servants of God. God has chosen us, chosen us to receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. This covenant, this alliance of God between man and God. And when we give worth to this, we begin to work once again. We were stopped, we were resting old spiritually, but with the presence of the oil, with the presence of the Holy Spirit, everything is being renewed. Everything is being made new. And here the Lord was showing that the gear began to work once again. And that's the desire of the servant, to the church to begin to work once again. Church begin to grow once again. Once again, the church begin to prosper once again. The ark of the Lord who was in our midst it will, it will bless us in such a way that everyone will see this testimony of what God is capable of doing in the life of the servant who was obedient on before. It's not known, but from the moment he received the ark of the Lord, he became known. And his name was registered in the book of life, in, in, the, in the Bible. Who was obedient on? Who was you or I? We were nothing. We were no one. But from the moment we received the ark of the Lord, and uh, through our testimony, we, people are going to know the project of God and the the power of God and what God can do in the life of man. He, he operated in the, his, his life interior, in his interior and his exterior in such a way that David heard about it. So that's the moment of the rescue of the ark. So when the Lord blesses his people in such a way that they will give testimony of the presence of God in our midst, then the ark of the Lord will be removed and will be taken to the eternity. Amen. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for your zeal, your care and love, for your mercy, for your presence in our midst, because we are servants. We know, Lord, the high cost and the high price was paid for a rescue. So this ark, oh God, this alliance, this pact was being placed in our lives, in our homes, in our household, so that not only us, but that our whole family may be blessed. Like your son said, as has written in your word, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you'll be saved, you will in household. And that's what we want, and that's what we give worth to in your word, so that your presence may be made in our midst. Bless your people, pour out the oil of the Holy Spirit upon your servants, prepare us for, for the services in presence, so that in there, Lord, your name may be greatly blessed, glorified, and that your people may be multiplied the number, the number of saved, and accept your project, so that we may accept your project in our lives, Lord, and that we may go up together to the eternity. Bless your servants throughout the week, in their secular life, their spiritual life, their material life, and everything. We plead, Lord, for your blessing, and above all, Lord, of your presence in our midst. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, you pour out with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. The service is over. The word now is given to Pastor Ronildo and to all the peace of the Lord. My brethren, peace of the Lord. We're going to begin the period of assistance. And if someone desires prayer, stay here a little longer. And after the, the brethren greet one another, we're going to give you a prayer. Reminding the brethren that this coming Saturday, we're going to have service in presence at the church. The church will be open since early dawn. The early dawn is going to be made in the church. We're going to try to stream the early dawn through Zoom. So we are not going to have uh, an early dawn by group. Initially, we are going to do it in the church with transmission to Zoom to everyone. We are going to send the link 
to the brethren so that you may participate. But the ones who want to go, the church will be open. Saturday night, 7.30, the church, group A, because the last group that went to the church was group C. So given continuity to our schedule, this Saturday is going to be group A, and Sunday night is going to be group B, and this coming Saturday is going to be group C, and so we will be alternating and giving opportunity to everyone who wants to go to the servicing presence so that they may be, have this, may be having this opportunity. Amen? Anything else? Tuesday night, the groups are going to be meeting through Zoom so that they may come up with the answers, seeking the answers on the word for the Sunday school. Every group is going to meet, and Wednesday night, we have the meeting with the women, always through Zoom. And Thursday, also, the service is going to be through Zoom, the prayer service. Amen? I want to say, wish everyone the peace of the Lord. I want to thank the presence of the brethren, a few brethren from Brazil, a few brethren from the Church of Houston. Thank you very much for the translation. Amen. Alguém precisa de oração? É, Tino, o grupo, o grupo que você faz parte é o grupo A, tá bom? Então você é, pode levar sua família no grupo da sábado à noite. Eu queria uma oração, pai.